it can be a beautiful future. The thing that I say is the future is beautiful or there isn't one. We don't get it right. The path we're on is a dead end. So we've got to rethink the basic fundamental paradigms that, that created the metacrisis in the first place because that paradigm ain't going to solve the metacrisis and it's not going to serve us well in the long run. What we really need is an amalgamation, a reunification of the left brain and the right brain back into equilibrium, okay, so that we have a whole brain approach to things. Because I'm not against AI or analytics or reductive thinking. I'm a scientist too. I'm just saying we, we shouldn't do it at the expense of the deep creativity that comes from the earth itself. If we get into a competition with AI on its terms, we lose. It's just that simple. And so by participating in, wrong, in the wrong way, with the wrong relationship toward it, we're basically guaranteeing our own obsolescence. That's the choice we have to make today. How are we going to interact with it? This is cognitive entanglement. The earth is constantly teaching us how to live in the world. Not only is it teaching us narrative, it's teaching us aesthetic appreciation. It's teaching us how to do metaphor. Because in order to make this tool, you have to create a surface that you can hit a, lot, a final time and get the tool. That means you have to see one thing, this thing, in terms of this thing. To see one thing in terms of another thing, that's the cognitive capacity of metaphor. This is Shakespeare. This is where Shakespeare got it. I call it Shakespeare in the cave. The earth literally taught us how to do all these things. Think about this. Remember when there was a big group of primates living on the plains of Africa and a small group went and did all this, went and explored the world and learned from it? What about the group that stayed? That group that stayed, Sahelanthropus chadensis was the species, they went on to become chimpanzees and they didn't do the diaspora and they're still living like, like they don't live much different than they lived seven million years ago because our species left the group and went and learned from every habitat on the planet, you get us. If you don't do that, you get chimps and they're still flinging shit at each other out in the trees. We don't talk like this. Even the, even the scientists and the, you know, the smartest people today don't talk in terms of this is where we get our intelligence. And we're already now looking to AI and, and thinking of that as intelligence, which it isn't. It doesn't have this history. They talk about the metacrisis as being a failure of imagination. In fact, it's easier to imagine the end of the world than to imagine the end of capitalism. That's true, unless you think of it this way. The heights of our imagination, the imagination that we're going to need to solve the metacrisis, where do we get it? We get it by going deep down into our knowledge of ourselves. The depths of our knowledge reflects the heights of our imagination. That's the idea. Okay, so now. Instead of saying that it was this statistical, algorithmic, probability, prediction error thing that I was trying to describe through Bayes' theorem, 